Berkshire Hathaway, led by Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha, had never participated in an IPO offering in over 50 years. That was until one business was so special they broke with tradition. Snowflake, the cloud-based data warehousing business, is that company, and Snowflake became the largest US software IPO in history. But what is the story of Snowflake, and how did they become such a renowned business? Here's how it happened. First of all, what is Snowflake? Snowflake is a cloud-based data warehousing company based in California and founded in 2012. Snowflake offers a software-as-a-service model which requires little maintenance, which helps customers to focus on getting value from their data rather than managing the infrastructure in which it's stored. Some call their offering data warehouse as a service, storing user data and allowing analysis using cloud infrastructure, thus avoiding the need for an on-prem storage facility and giving much more insights and analytics for the data. It runs across Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure, and Google's cloud platform. Snowflake started in 2012 and was the brainchild of three experts, Benoit Dajville, Thierry Cruan, and Marcin Zakowski, in conjunction with Sutter Hill Ventures, a secretive VC firm, and the trio came up with the name Snowflake thanks to their love of snow sports. Their view was that data warehouses were, and often still are, rigid, expensive, and difficult to use. So they decided to revolutionize the industry by running the warehouse on the cloud. They knew it needed to factor in speed, ease of use, cost effectiveness, and thereby mastering the elasticity of the cloud. For their first two years, they operated in stealth mode before appointing Bob Muglia, a former Microsoft executive, as CEO and making the company publicly known. When their offering first became available in June 2015, they had about 80 customers, and as of 2020, they had around 3,500 active customers that included Capital One, Adobe, DoorDash, and Instacart. During Muglia's five years as CEO, they supercharged growth, generating hundreds of millions of dollars in funding rounds. Snowflake also revolutionized the pricing model. Rather than using a subscription model, which has the benefit of locking in revenue, but customers pay for things they don't use, Snowflake chose a utilization model, which focuses on a client's consumption based on whether they're computing data or storing data, thereby splitting the pricing making everything more flexible. The tap can then be switched on and off when required. In 2019, Snowflake replaced Muglia with a new CEO, Frank Slootman, who was known for making organizations attractive to investors, having led data domain and service now to IPO, coming out of retirement to join Snowflake. He brought in key contacts in high-profile positions and managed to double Snowflake's customer base from 1,500 to 3,000 in the space of 12 months significantly increasing revenue, but also increasing losses, which are somewhat commonplace for high-growth software businesses. Slootman increased the size of the sales force and hired teams that specialized in gaining big-ticket clients. He also promoted Dajville, the co-founder, to become chief product officer, eliminating four other people who had oversight as there were too many cooks in the kitchen. They also increased the amount of customers spending seven figures with the business alongside great customer retention rates. This success led the company to its IPO in September 2020 at $120 per share, which doubled in value on the first day of trading to give the business a $70 billion valuation, the largest IPO for a US software company in history, which saw Warren Buffett get involved, investing half a billion dollars alongside Salesforce and many other VC investors. There's no denying that the market Snowflake operates in is massive, with the International Data Corporation calculating that $88 billion in revenue was generated from global data storage in 2018, which might double by 2023. In order for Snowflake to continue to grow, they need to continue holding their rivals at bay. The issue, however, is that whilst they have first mover advantage, giants like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft are already making moves to challenge Snowflake, who are actually reliant on Amazon's AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google's cloud platform for data storage, thereby operating as both a customer and a competitor. Neutrality can be seen as an advantage as companies operate multi-cloud offerings, but there's low barriers to entry for these behemoth businesses to muscle in on Snowflake's market share. 
That being said, there's no denying Snowflake's monumental growth and their efforts to change the way that people think about data and pricing, showing they're not afraid to swim against the current. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.